Hey everyone, welcome to Road CC. And welcome to the beautiful Wiltshire countryside. Now, if you've seen videos on Road CC before, you might have seen our Mavic e-bike video. Then you might have seen a shot like this before out in front. Kind of looks like a drone follow shot. It's pretty clever. It's not a drone though, it's just a camera on a stick. Really clever camera that we really like. This is our mini review of it. So stay tuned for what camera it is and all the things we like about it. This is how we did it. This is the Insta360 X3, which I've been using for quite a few months now. And as well as that party trick, it's also a really, really good all round cycling camera. I'm going to take you through some of the specs and some of the features and show you some of the things it can do. Right, let's crack into it. First things first, what is a 360 camera? Well, as you can see, this has a lens on the front and a lens on the back. Both of them have a really wide field of view, which is more than 180 degrees. So the camera can see all the way around itself and using some clever AI and algorithms it puts together those two images to get a single image. Now the Insta360 X3 has a half inch sensor and it can record a 5.7k 360 image. That sounds like a lot and it is but you don't ever get to see all of that picture obviously you're cropping into the picture. On one lens on one side it will record in 4k and obviously because it knows where it's stitching the image together it can take some things out specifically what it can take out is a selfie stick so if you're holding it out in front of you like we've seen on the bike pics at the start of this video it can edit that out and it looks like it's in the air on its own as well as recording video it can also take a 72 megapixel 360 degree photo which is quite impressive and there are a load of other modes too um, there's an 8k time lapse mode you can set uh, you can do all kinds of interval filming there's even a, a bullet mode where you put it on a string and razz it around your head but for cycling that's not really something i think we're going to try the camera is really easy to use uh, it's got a really big uh, 2.3 inch touch screen on the side here it's very good you can get access to all the modes and all of the settings from there there's also a remote, which is really useful for a camera like this, which, you know, you can mount to lots of different places and is not necessarily accessible to you. So stick the remote on your bars and then you can trigger it when you want to get your shot. Now, there are all kinds of ways to use a camera like this, but obviously this is a cycling channel. So we're talking about cycling and there are a few things that Insta make for this camera, which are really good and make it into a really great camera to take with you on a ride like this. First up, and probably the one you'll use most on a bike ride, is the selfie stick. Um, just screws into the bottom there, and then you can extend it really quite a long way, probably about four feet of extension there. And that means you can get some really interesting shots. You can go like right or high up in the sky, which is a bit like a drone shot. You can go low to get some really nice low angle stuff or out in front of you. It's quite a big unit like that, but it'll still fit in your back pocket quite easily. Next up, you can mount it to your helmet if you like. Uh, and if you've seen any of Jeremy Vine's footage from London, this is basically the setup that he uses. It's an Insta camera on top of his helmet like that and that obviously gives you a great view all around you can see what's going on all around you i'm not personally a fan of putting stuff on the top of my helmet but it is an option for you if you want to get that particular shot then there's this which is a pretty standard but quite nicely made bar mount so you can add this to your bars you can also put it on your on your frame and bits on your seat post and you can get a variety of different shots from that and one of the nice things about this, one of the nice things and one of the bad things actually is that this rotates around and you can get different angles from the same mount. So that's good. Although what I found is that the tolerances on it are not quite good enough for that and it tends to rattle around a bit making the footage a bit shaky. So what I've done is I've got a couple of those mounts and I have fixed them in position. I've got one at 90 degrees and one at 45 degrees and I use those on the bike. In fact, the one at 45 degrees is the one that I use most of all. And finally, there's this. This is a specific out front mount for your handlebars. So you attach it to your bars, then you can attach the camera to the front here. And there's a couple of other mounts on here. They're just standard action camera mounts. So if you've got a Garmin, you can put it on top. Or if you've got a light, you can put it on bottom. You'll just need the specific mount for that light. 
It's not as straightforward as a normal action camera where you've got a single field of view and you just pull the footage off the camera. You need to do a little bit of work with your files. So there are two basic ways of doing that. You can do it on your phone or you can do it on a desktop computer. If you're doing it on your phone, obviously that means that you can do it on the go, which is quite handy if you're sticking stuff on social. And one of the great things about a camera like this is because it's recording a 360 and you're cropping into it, you can crop to vertical or horizontal or square or whatever you like and it doesn't really affect the image quality because you're already taking a portion of the image in the first place. The smartphone app is uh, actually pretty good. You can do lots of different stuff with the footage. You can zoom in and out so you can do this sort of worldview thing where you've got uh, you in the middle and the kind of world going behind, around behind you. That's quite cool. Or you can crop into a more of a, like an action camera format. One of the great things about a 360 camera is that you can reframe the image. So if you're riding along with the camera on your bars and you've got a mate riding in front, you can have footage of them, you can have footage of you, you can have footage of the countryside going by, and you can switch between those. So you can have keyframes in your video where the camera moves around. Editing on desktop has its benefits. And for me, that's how I tend to use the camera because you can drag down the original files and then you can make different copies of them. So you can reframe them in different ways and save them out. And you know, you end up with quite a lot of big files and it's quite processor intensive. If you try and do that on a smartphone, you end up spending a lot of time doing it and using up a lot of your phone's memory. So it's better on a desktop, I find, because you can have various shots that you can pull together and if you don't like one you can go and reframe it and do it again it's a lot easier in that regard so there you go we've talked you through some of the features of the insta360 x3 and also we've seen a bunch of footage from it and the general take home from that is that the footage is very good if you're taking a camera out for a bike ride and you want to record a bunch of stuff then that's the minimum bar isn't it that it needs to be able to record good footage and the insta360 x3 definitely does that it's a bonus that it's 360 because that means you get more framing options, you get different views that you can pull from the same footage and that can make your video more interesting. You just get a bit more with the stuff that you film. So that's a good thing about it. The battery life is good too. Obviously no action camera has a massive battery but this is probably bigger than most and you can get a decent amount of footage out of a day's riding out of this camera without ever having to charge it up. If you do want to charge it up and simply take a battery pack with you, charge it from the USB-C port. There are a few downsides to having a camera like this. You can see from the form factor, it's a little bit bigger than something like a GoPro or a, an Osmo Action. You have to be a little bit more careful with it too because the lenses protrude and there's no cover on them. That means that potentially it's easier to damage the lenses. You can get covers for them, but it does affect the image quality quite badly. The sensor in this is a half inch sensor and low light performance is for an action camera pretty good but again that's not a big plus point of an action camera generally the the low light performance tends to fall off and yeah that's the case here too better on a lovely warm october day in wiltshire like all the october days in wiltshire always are one of the other plus points of this camera is that there's a load of different mounting options we've we've seen that you can mount it to all different parts of your bike uh, it's easy to hold in your hand as well when you're riding most of the time, as long as you're not riding over anything particularly rough. And the great thing about the selfie stick is that the camera's internal software will edit it out all the time. So you can push it out in front of you and it just looks like it's floating in midair, which is a really good, unique selling point for a 360 camera like this. It's not cheap, but it's really nicely built. The quality is good. The image quality is good. The battery life is good. And so it's easy to recommend as, you know, a, the one camera to take with you when you go on your cycling adventures. So that's the Insta360 X3, a great little cycling camera. Have you ever used a 360 camera? Would you consider one for your next action cam for out on your bike? Let us know in the comments below. If you've liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more like it. And we'll see you in the next one.